everybody, and welcome to another edition of Sports Select Sports Talk. I'm your host, Mitchell Clinton, joined by Sheldon Appel of the University of Winnipeg. He's the sports information coordinator there. And Sheldon, we're doing kind of a, a year in review kind of thing, even though for the baseball team, the year's kind of still going. But uh, in terms of Canada West, it was pr a pretty good season for the Winnipeg Westmen, I'd say. I would say it was an uh, up and down year, but it was pretty successful. Um, <clears throat> big turnaround with players and programs, but uh, I'd say we're... Um, somewhat pleased with with our results and standings. A lot of exciting things basically going on throughout the year at, at the University of Winnipeg. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the show when we talk about the top five stories, so stay tuned for that. But uh, <laughs> also, you know, we'll, we'll get things started off with the men's volleyball team. We'll cover a few teams pretty quickly here just to kind of get through and, and talk about them before we get to the women's volleyball team. That'll be kind of the, the meat and potatoes of the show, if you will. Um, so we'll start with men's volleyball. Head coach Larry McKay and his team, 7-13 and 13 this season. Uh, what was kind of their, their feeling about their season this year? I think they were surprised, though, how well they did do. Uh, they were a very young team coming in. Uh, a lot of first-year players, second-year players, third-year players, only two fifth-year players. So they were a very young team, but they did show progression at the end of last season. That carried over to this year. They got a bit of a slow start this year, but after the um, December break, they, um, they had an exhibition series against Sherbrooke, which uh, they did win three in a row there. That kind of built the momentum going to the second half, and they just barely missed the playoffs by uh, you know a couple of games. And uh, um, if they would have gotten to the playoffs, who knows what could have happened. Well, exactly. Yeah. You talk about the playoffs. They, uh, the Manitoba Bisons ended up playing UBC Okanagan, who just beat out the Westman. And on the women's volleyball side of things, there was the, the Westman and Bison rivalry. That would have been some if it was in the men's side, too. Yes, close. close. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next year. We'll see. It kind of depends on things go. Uh, moving over to men's basketball, uh, head coach Mike Rainbow, tough year for the, those guys, 4-16. and 16. It, was a, it was a frustrating year for Mike and the team, definitely. Uh, this team had a lot of high expectations with a lot of um, recruits coming in, and injuries just killed this team at the beginning of the year. Uh, we were without a point guard for basically the first three months of the year, up till about the Westman Classic. Um, we had Nolan Gooding, who basically was out for the year with, you know, he had a knee injury from last year. Andrew Cunningham got hurt, uh, you know, in September. So he didn't come back until the Westman Classic in uh, December. Braden Duff got uh, injured the first couple of games. He was out for six weeks. And um, this team didn't come together until probably about the end of the, you know, probably about January, February. And by then it's almost too late. And, you know. Yeah, you touched on the Westman Classic. You know, did, did does having a winning record there almost kind of help them take a little bit of the sting off the fact that you know when it came down to their home tournament, at the very least they were able to put in a good showing. Westman Classic, Mike was very very pleased with the way they did play. Um, this team gelled, and we got Andrew back for the Westman Classic, which is a big help when you have a point guard who could, uh, you know, score some points, you know, set up the, you know, set up other players, and um, it was a confidence booster for the team. You know, then after that they had a couple of days off and they got right back into the Canada West schedule on the road and um, played some very good games out west, but unfortunately by then it's a little bit too late and they had to play catch up, which is tough. For sure, especially in Canada West. Uh, talking, well, sticking with uh, basketball, we'll go to the women's side now. Head coach Tanya McKay <clears throat> and her team going 9 11. They made the playoffs, losing to Regina 2 0 in the Canada West quarterfinals. Uh, it was going to be a bit of an adjustment for this team uh, at this, from the, from the get go, losing some players. Would you say <clears throat> making playoffs was a success? I'd say it was a success, yes. And I think Tanya would be happy. You know, it was unfortunate we had to. Um, you know, we got the wild card and we had to draw a team who was 20 and 0 and uh, looked pretty primed to, you know, um, go for a national championship this year in Regina. They're, they haven't lost in, I believe, 24 games and just to go out there and uh, the first game we weren't competitive. The second game, you know, we were a little bit closer. We only lost by 14, so it was pretty close. But um, considering when you lose the players that they did lose, you know, the Katie Gooch and, you know, it's pretty tough. and. Um, um, I think Tanya is pretty happy with making the playoffs and this adjustment and next year we'll see what happens. They kind of build on the, the season that they did have getting to that wild card maybe they'll get into a, a firm playoff spot next season. Uh, just before we go to break we're going to throw to uh, we started an analysis at the start of the year of these teams we kind of went down invaded to Sheldon and the University of Winnipeg and kind of <laughs> talked to these three teams specifically just about what their expectations were for the season so here is that story. After being upset in last year's Canada West playoffs, head coach Tanya McKay says the Westman women's basketball team has a different look this year. Well, we're definitely going to be a different team uh, this year from last year. Uh, we've lost uh, Alex McIver, who was our 6'5 post inside. So, you know, we've kind of changed our personnel inside. So we've more or less decided to change our system. We're going to be more of a, an upbeat, uh, fast-paced, uh, run-and-gun team. 
man-to-man uh, -man defense full court. So we kind of see ourselves transitioning from uh, you know a five-on-five -five team to a more transition team. That change of pace meant a full off-season conditioning program for the team, in particular the veterans from last season who finished with a record of 20 and four. The neat thing has been uh, our veteran players that return. This is an adjustment for them. So right now we're kind of in that phase where there's frustrating times. You know they're getting used to emotion offense, a lot of concepts. So you know it, it has been a struggle, but I think the kids are starting to buy in. And through our preseason, our exhibition games, we're hoping to have it all settled down by league play. Meanwhile, on the men's side of the ball, despite a 6-18 and record last year, the team is looking to make an appearance in the postseason. Coach Mike Rainbow says they'll be relying on depth to get them there, which will help them in more ways than one. I think uh, first and foremost, it gives us a chance to be, uh, you know, a little bit tougher in our practice scenarios. I mean, more depth means a little bit more competitive action and practice day in and day out, which, uh, you know, just allows us to really battle and, and hopefully continue growing. He says the competition in practice also leads to some tough decisions for his coaching staff. We're still sort of in the evaluation phase. Uh, you know, the good and bad thing for us right now as a coach, we have a lot of guys that are right at the same level. So we're, we're really pushing them day in and day out to see who's going to step up and, and elevate their game and see who we can count on to, to be the big produ production type guys this year. Over to volleyball, third year Matt Stubler and the men's team know they have some improving of their own to do after coming off a 2-16 and 16 season. We just got to keep working really hard. We're a really young team and we just have to, like I said, work our butts off in practice to uh, compete with the top teams in Kenwest. We're a lot better than we were last year. We're obviously a year older. We had a good bunch of recruits in that are quality CIS, well BCIS, good, good CIS players. And uh, yeah, we're, we're looking pretty good. Stubler says the team knows what it has to do to reach the next level and adds his goal for this season is simple. It's just improved. You know, it's more of what I can do for the team. I know everyone here has that mentality. Just work our, work our butts off and do what we can for the team to, for a team to get better. The men's volleyball team behind me has a chance to improve on their Canada West record from last season on November 3rd when they host Brandon. The women's team, they went 6-12. and 12. They've also got their chance, their home opener, November 3rd, 6 p.m., also against Brandon here at the Duckworth Centre. Now on the basketball side of things, well, they've also got their chance to get underway. That's November 4th and 5th, their home openers against Lethbridge. For Shaw TV, I'm Mitchell Clinton. So that was a look at the start of the Canada West season for the men's volleyball, basketball, and women's basketball teams before the Canada West season even got started. We're going to go to break, and when we come back, Sheldon and I are going to talk about the Westman team that got the furthest this year uh, in terms of Canada West competition, that being the women's volleyball team. So stay tuned for that. of sport in Winnipeg. Welcome back to the second half of Sports Select Sports Talk. Mitchell Clinton here once again with Sheldon Appel, the Sports Information Coordinator at University of Winnipeg. Now let's get to the women's volleyball team. They're the ones that got the farthest. Head coach Diane Scott and her team finishing 14-6, and six, a big improvement from last year. Uh, good enough for third in Canada West. They came and had a home playoff matchup with the Manitoba Bisons. Can you talk about what that atmosphere was like? That was amazing. Um, <laughs> Basically, just to beat Manitoba was good, but just the crowd that we had and having home court was a big, big help because we had a big crowd. We had a lot of students there, and uh, basically this team was almost unbeaten at home this year, and the home court really, really um, helped them. Lawrence Sears, who was our fifth-year team captain, always said, this is our house, and no one's going to come into our house and beat us. And, um, you know, I think that was a big factor being at home, and... Uh, Basically, we were playing our best volleyball of the year up to that point as well, so it really team, helped. The team can certainly rally around when someone says, this is our house. I yes. mean, you, you, you look at the Winnipeg Jets, you mm -hmm. know, the, <laughs> the same kind of deal with the MTS Center. Uh, did the team's success against the Bisons in the Duckworth Challenge uh, help in terms of confidence? 
I think it happened before that uh, at the Leah Mark Volleyball Challenge um, back in October. We beat Manitoba in the finals there to uh, you know win that win our own tournament, which helped. And we played Manitoba in the final, beat them, and I think that was a kind of a, a confidence booster, you know, when you win something. And um, but then to beat Manitoba again at the Duckworth, it was kind of a you know it just basically. Um, the momentum just carried on to there, which was good. And uh, that helped the team at the end, end of the year as well. And that momentum helped the Westmen get past the Bisons in two straight. Then they went off to the final four in Canada West, which is always kind of a big accomplishment as well. Needing one win to get to <laughs> Nationals. And unfortunately for the Westmen, they went down in five to Alberta. And uh, they also went down in three to Trinity Western. So a, a tough kind of showing there. But, uh, you know, Brittany <clears throat> Habing, the setter, we were talking a little bit off camera, kind of thrown off by, by the, the loss to Alberta, even though they were tied for third in terms of national rankings with Alberta. What was kind of uh, the reason for, for the show? I think it was just because um, we had Alberta and basically at the beginning of the year we did split with them and um, that was like we lost in the first game in the back in I believe it was October second game we uh, you know swept we beat them in five that built a confidence saying you know, that we can now beat a top ranked team which Alberta I believe at that time was ranked number three or four and we were just basically moving up the rankings but um, they were beatable. We had a chance to beat them, and unfortunately, we had match point. And uh, in the fourth set, there, and this came close, and you know, a few errors on our side, you know, hurt us, and uh, weren't able to close it out. And yeah. hopefully they can build on that uh, for next year as well, like we've said with a lot of the uh, Westman teams. We covered this women's volleyball team a few times this season, so we'll take a few, look, a few looks at some stories that we did throughout the year. It's a light practice day for the Winnipeg Westman women's volleyball team. A record of 10-2 and two and a national ranking of third after the first half of the Canada West season might be the reason why. Certainly it, it has been a great start for us and, uh, you know, scheduling really uh, does have a, a part of the effect. Uh, also, it's just the team dynamic. Uh, we're just a different team this year. We're, we're driven, we're, uh, we're more motivated, and uh, if anything, we have uh, just a little more courage, if I can say that, that uh, we've had some tough situations and we still battle it out, and we've found ways to win um, being up, being down, but, uh, but it's worked out for us. Besides courage, Scott believes there's another mental improvement the Westmen have made leading them to Scott's best start as a coach in the past 10 years. I think uh, the primary reason is the belief that we can win. Um, we certainly have the, the skill ability. Uh, we've played inconsistent at times and still found a way to sort of weather that storm and, and gut it out. So that's been really positive and that's a big change. It's because it's the team's a year older. Uh, we've added some key players, um, just maturity, all those different things. And once you start believing in yourself, things change. After a preseason record of eight and two, Scott says the team knew they were going to be a tough team to beat. But she points to the month of November as an important stretch for her squad, especially with a tough second half schedule coming up. Our Calgary weekend, I think, was a real significant double win for us. And going into Alberta and splitting was huge. So um, outside of that, everyone's in the same boat, so to speak. Um, second half, Trinity traditionally is strong, and certainly we have UBC and we finish up with Manitoba, which is, as everyone uh, assumes, our crosstown rival and nemesis. And so it, it, in terms of balance, it's great for us because we've taken care of our first half quite well, and that, uh, that helps us go into the second half with, with a really good focus. Fifth-year captain Lauren Sears knows the Westmen are entering a crucial point in the Canada West season. Uh, this winter training is really important. We're trying to reboot a lot of things, get stronger, uh, but also get some rest at the same time. But we want a tougher second half, and we're definitely getting ready for it. We would love to have tougher games before playoffs get us ready to go. As for the national ranking of third, Sears says it's something the team doesn't think about, regardless of how high they climb. To be honest with you, we don't really look at it at all. We hear it from outside sources and we don't really take it in. We really just focus on playing in the moment and one step at a time. We're trying to get too ahead of ourselves. We've uh, really come together as a team and we've battled with the adversity that we've dealt with, dealing with a different team every weekend, but we really just take it one match at a time, one point at a time, and one practice at a time. For Shaw TV, I'm Mitchell Clinton. So the Women's Volleyball Canada West and CIS seasons have come to an end. I'm here with Diane Scott on my right, Brittany Habing on my left. I got that pronunciation. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Diane, so I guess uh, the question is, you know, uh, I guess evaluate the season uh, in terms of the, the Westman. Uh, obviously a good record in Canada West. 
We had an exceptional season and very pleased with our performance. Uh, coming up a little short was a little hard to take, um, but certainly know that we had um, a great competitive year. We improved throughout the year and we still had some left in us and that's, uh, that's the hard part. And you got past Manitoba in the quarters, then you went to Final Four, needing one win to get to the Nationals and unfortunately losing to Alberta and then Trinity Western. What was kind of going through your mind as a coach? What did you say to the players after that game? Uh, well, after the Alberta match, it was it was challenging and, and hard to be able to handle the loss. Um, but at the same time, we knew we still had one more match uh, to have a chance. And you have to keep things in perspective there. We knew going in, we just needed one match. We performed exceptionally well on that weekend and just came up a little short. And Brittany, I guess from the players' standpoint, when that uh, final game against Trinity Western came to an end for you guys, what, what was kind of going through the players' minds? Um, I think a lot of us were still trying to put Friday's game behind us because we, a lot of us are still in disbelief. I'm still in disbelief that we lost that game. So we tried to put that behind us, but obviously came up short to Trinity. And Diane, you still made your way to the national championship. Uh, what was kind of going through your head, seeing the teams that were competing there? Is that uh, something that uh, you, know, you kind of stacked up your team against uh, the teams that you were watching? Oh, without question. I th think it's important to uh, to attend the championship, whether you're playing in it or not. Um, it's for growth and development. Uh, I took three of our athletes with. Um, I think that was very important for their exposure. And uh, what what was critical was that we couldn't go in there feeling bitter or upset. We had our opportunity and we didn't grab it. Um, so it was important to understand where we where we fit in. And certainly we were. Uh, competitive and we would have performed quite nicely at championship. So now you talked about the improvement that you had this year. What about next year? What, what can fans kind of expect from the, the West Point women's volleyball team? I think we're going to be hungrier um, because we had a taste of a really successful season. And I think the experience, although it was heartbreaking, uh, is also a real motivator for us. And I think the athletes now are, are really driven to be more. And Brittany, I'm guessing from an athlete standpoint, you pretty much agree 100%. For sure. Having been there, we know that we want to be back there next year for sure. There you go. That's uh, the Winnipeg West. We've got Brittany Having, the setter, and Diane Scott, the head coach, talking about their Canada West season. For Shaw TV, I'm Mitchell Clinton. So even though the Westman women's volleyball team didn't get to the national championship, still making it to the final four is a huge accomplishment. And uh, Sheldon, the Canada West season, you know, it, it's it's still going on in, in a few sports and there's still some sports going on at the University of Winnipeg as well. So uh, obviously the year isn't quite done, but certainly it's been quite a year already for the University of Winnipeg. And uh, we have your top five Westman stories. The first one, number five, the new facility getting approval. Yeah, that just uh, last week, um, the Board of Regents, I guess, gave approval for a $40 million facility to be built at the, uh, just basically adjacent to the Duckworth Centre. Um, Multi-use facility, which will have, uh, you know, indoor soccer and chance for football and um, community inner city groups to come in and uh, running track, um, health and wellness institute will be in there as well. So. Hoping to get the shovels in the ground this spring and looking at a fall 2013 opening. And about $40 million, about half of Tracy Koga's salary in and around <laughs> that kind of area. Uh, number four, uh, the baseball program getting off the ground. Yes, these uh, these guys could finally get out of our gym and, and, and from their uh, home batting cages and they could actually you know see a field. They um, played a three game series in Minneapolis uh, this past Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and playing in the Metrodome, which is good for them. So just to them to get onto a field and get playing, it's a, it's a big step. And we got our home opener coming up in April. Hopefully the snow will be melted by then, so we're looking forward to that. And we've talked to head coach Mike Krajkowicz a couple of times just about uh, you know the season that, that's coming up and everything. He seems excited to go, and I'm looking forward to talking to him throughout the year. Seems like quite the character. <laughs> uh, number three, the buzz created by the women's volleyball team we just talked about. Yes, they're... Um, after several, many years of you know struggling or just coming so close, just to get that buzz around the campus, and I think now the momentum has kind of shifted, not shifted, but equaled out from us to Manitoba, and um, now people think that you know I think this makes Manitoba as a province a stronger volleyball mm -hmm. community. Now they have three schools who are in almost consistently ranked in the top ten, and um, this the buzz around the campus. You know, with Lauren Sears getting her All Canadian and. First year sensational Zana Nicola getting CIS Rookie of the Year, and of course Diane Scott, after 17 years, gets a Coach of the Year award. It's just been, 
it was just good to feel that buzz around the whole campus and people say you know women's volleyball is back at the University of Winnipeg. And it's a good thing it kind of gives those uh, schools out west something to think about yes. especially when it comes to volleyball that Manitoba is coming back with that combination of the Bisons, the Westmen and the Bobcats. Uh, number two the addition of CIS wrestling and hosting the Olympic trials this was huge. That was huge uh, the Olympic trials happened in December which was um, you know huge which you know basically was a qualifying event for the 2012 summer games in London and it was uh, I'd say there was probably about 2,000 fans there per day at the Duckworth Center for the uh, three-day event and this the wrestling uh, Adrian Bruce did a f you know a great job you know with the team this year he only had um, we had a wrestler Jessica Brenton out from uh, Montana who was um, or Wyoming sorry um, who was basically qualified for nationals. She finished fifth at the CIS Nationals and I think that's a good step to build on so this program will get bigger. Adrian is presently recruiting out, out east and out west and looking to expand that program this year. We talked about how good of a guy Mike Krakowicz is to talk to. Adrian, another one of those guys, uh, another guy that has been on Sports Select Sports Talk before. We look forward to talking to him as well. The number one story, the, the team that we haven't quite touched on very much, but they dominated the MCAC, uh, the Westman soccer team getting into the CIS. Yes, after uh, two years of back-to-back -back champions at the MCAC level, we um, basically in February, the Canada West Athletic Directors approved to allow us to play in the Canada West which is part of the CIS. It was a surprise because this was supposed to be in their May AGM but they pushed it up to February and when my athletic director Doran Reed you know texted me with the news and said we're in CIS get that release so we were like wow and happened early and we're pumped you know we're excited about it because um, this team after two years success in the MCAC will now get to you know go out west challenge those uh, BC schools the Alberta um, plus, it'll bring another rivalry to our uh, women's team with Manitoba's women's soccer team, so we're pumped about that, definitely. Nothing wrong with a little bit of uh, friendly rivalry yeah. as well. We talked, maybe it'll get added to the Duckworth, but probably not because of the fact that there's no men's soccer team uh, going on at either school, so it's kind of a... Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll see how it kind of develops, well, I Maybe guess. me and Zook will arm wrestle. Who knows? <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> By the way, that, that actually brings something up. Has he provided you the shirt for losing the Duckworth? I'm still waiting. I told uh, Chris was busy with hockey and um, you know a few weeks ago, and um, I'm waiting. I said, I'm all game. So uh, I'm definitely, when he's ready, we'll... Uh, We'll get it together. And yeah. I'm sure that photo will magically make its way to Sports Select Sports Talk as well yeah. when we do the, the year end with the Manitoba Bison. Sheldon, thanks for coming on the program as well. And uh, thanks to you for tuning in to another edition of Sports Select Sports Talk.